Hello everyone and a happy new year to you all and I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and new year period. This is the first vlog that I will do of 2024 and it's an exciting year ahead for myself and my partner Facundo because this is the year we get married and we're really looking forward to that and preparations are, are now underway. Um, but we've been also having a, a bit of time to look back over how things have been really. It's, it's um, about three years, well, nearly three years since we, we met, first met each other. We both celebrate a birthday quite late in the year, Facundo in November, myself in December. So this vlog will include sort of what we've done for our birthdays, what we've done for Christmas, a little bit of New Year and a little bit of thoughts about the year ahead and where we are now really. So the vlog will start really looking back at Facundo's birthday in late November. We went for a lovely brunch at a restaurant in Hove called Earth, which means egg in French. But despite being a specialist egg restaurant, Facundo preferred to get a frumpet uh, for his uh, choice, whereas I did opt for a full English breakfast that did include uh, some eggs. It was very tasty. And then later on, we had some friends to visit us in the flat had a lovely time some snacks um, some food lots of lots of alcohol as well uh, and we also had some lovely decorations as you'll see so it's Kundo's birthday and it's the Saturday now so we're gonna have a few friends over I've not been feeling too well over the week because of spending last weekend with my football teammates and with my condo drinking but uh, anyway I'm looking forward to just a nice evening with friends really and we've got a pink themed well more specifically a mean girls themed birthday party so there's lots of pink things that are in the flat and um, you'll see here that we've got um, the the pink rosé and some flowers and that's uh, for condo's camera we've got the lights ready and then we've got to look at the, the cake actually there. That's uh, <laughs> on, on Wednesdays we wear pink and then that's so fetch. And it has the burn book as well. This is the end product. Once we've filled up the balloons, we've got the rosé prosecco, the happy birthday bunting, and the balloons there before we need to give them a little shake, but we filled them up with the helium. Um, and who knows if they will burst with the little lights behind them, but we'll find out later tonight but I think it looks lovely and <laughs> yeah maybe we maybe we have the little piggy for the table really good pipe work <laughs> they are right <laughs> a few weeks later we went to visit Glasgow up in Scotland and that was sort of coinciding with my birthday in early December uh, it was meant to be a football match that I was meant to play in up in Glasgow for Brighton Blags against Saltire Thistle. But uh, due to an injury, I, I wasn't able to play, but we'd already booked a few days up there. And so we went and explored Glasgow as a city instead. In Glasgow, we visited the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery, which is sort of west of the city centre. It's a, an old imperial sort of building built from the wealth of the empire, really. Um, we watched the organ recital, which it's an incredible instrument, isn't it? An organ with so many complexities. We saw some of the collections of armour, some of the stuffed animals that looked like they'd been gunned down by sort of hunters looking for specimens back a hundred odd years ago. Or maybe even they'd been gunned down by the large spitfire hanging from the ceiling for some reason. Um, and then there was sort of social elements around Glasgow as well in terms of the, 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 how Glasgow has evolved as a city. And then there was an art exhibition and also a little exhibition dedicated to the designer and architect Charles Rennie Mackintosh as well. So we enjoyed our trip there. Um, we 
enjoyed sort of wandering around Glasgow. It, it was very wet and rainy, not so cold, but just dark at the time of year and lots of rain. But in the Christmas lights, the city really sparkled, I would say. Um, it makes all the lights sort of spark, uh, on, on the ground, the wet pavements sort of come to life a little bit, really. And we saw the Christmas markets um, and the fair ground rides and everything that was on on display there so that was very lovely and quite festive as well so we're here at the christmas market and uh, it's in the center of glasgow this one's still open there's basically loads of fairground rides uh, which you see there there's a ferris wheel there's a helter skelter behind me and then tat and uh, there's also lots of chocolate and uh, bratwurst sausages and things like that it's it's a nice vibe though uh, it's better than the fact that Brighton couldn't even organise one this year um, and people have taken it in good spirits. The light. We enjoyed our trip to Glasgow and the people are very friendly and then we, we watched the football match uh, on the sidelines which I recorded and the highlights are coming up. Brighton Blacks travelled up to Glasgow for their third fixture in the GFSN Division 1 and it was a, for a match against Saltire Thistle to be played at the Tory Glen Centre, which is near Hampden Park, which is the national football stadium for Scotland. So we went up to Glasgow and before kick-off, both teams posed for a photograph and a, an early handshake. The Blags formed a huddle and had a team talk from captain and manager Colin and Kurt. And then the game got underway. In the early exchanges, it was an end to end contest with Glasgow posing a threat down the right hand side. But Blags countered down the right-hand side with a ball forward from Arthur into the path of Colin, who drove towards goal and eventually fired this shot, which found its way into the back of the net. So Brighton took an early lead, 1-0. And from here, we pick up the commentary. Well, that is 1-0 to Blags on the counter-attack. Colin with the goal. Couldn't quite believe that went in actually, but there we go, it's 1-0. What is it they say? If you don't buy a ticket, you can't win the raffle. Well, Colin bought a ticket and won the raffle. Oh, in the middle there. Yeah. Well, going to drive forward down the right. Good defending by Roddy. Good pass out of defence by Nick, but given away. Fred gets on the ball, finds Jan. One, is there a chance there? No, through to Kurt. Black's throw on the near side. Roddy to take. Aims for a little handball in there. But play continues. A bit of indecision back there, cleared. Ball down the line. <coughs> Arthur heads well, finds Phil. And Black's in possession. Given away, there's a chance. It's a class pass, but Kieran defends well. Kurt looking to prevent the corner. Cross. Early call by the goalkeeper who claims. Safe hands. First down the right here, Matt is chasing it. He'll get there. Colin onto the ball. He's a 
bit isolated, but he's turned out of the tricky situation well. Forces a corner. Putting in a good sprint down the right. Shaky hands again. Red with the corner. Deep and long, it might bounce. Jan hits it, oh, it's goal bound, it's a good block. And that should be the goalkeepers. Something's been given, I think. There's a head injury in the, in the middle there. There's a brave header, certainly, in the corner. Always a sore one. Now Roddy. And it may burst through again for Jan. Can he get a shot away? There is a second shot. And it's a good save. Cleared at the near post. Some competition there. Roddy gets on the ball and keeps it. Kieran. Well intercepted. Glasgow look to break. We've got three on four here. There's a foul in there. Roddy clears. Yeah, holding the ball up. Fred was surrounded there by a white shirt. Shot wide. There could be another break on here. Very high line. Matt bursting through down the right. Corner. No, good defending. Oh, it's still in play. Chance. Oh, not quite. Good goalkeeping. That's a good ball. Oh, he's round. Wow. A claim for a foul. Kieran shakes his head in disbelief. There's a midfield battle. There could be a break on. Again, good defending. And there may be a chance to counter. Goes for goal. Just wide. Alley, but wins a corner. <coughs> corner to come in. Can't see the kicker, but in it goes. It's high. Headed chance. Nick got his head to that. Scramble at the edge of the box. Chance to shoot. Ooh. There's a crossfield pass, and that is a chance. Is he too wide now? Oh, now's a chance. And a great save, but 1-1. One, one. It was a good initial save, but he followed up well on the rebound. Ooh, a bit cheeky. Fred looking for runners. Colin picks up. Oh, that's nice, bit of football there. Down the left from Blags. Jan looking to see what he can do down in the corner. Wins a corner with a little trick. And we'll take the corner now. Again into the near post. It'll be another corner, it was cleared. Into the middle. Oh, went through the wall of them. A cry of gamble from the goalkeeper there. But it did take a, a nick off a Glasgow player, so it's another corner. he do from the corner again first man not beaten that time and cleared and there is a counter on here it has been moved into that area it's two on two and the pass was the opportunity spurned spread towards the right and again two on two and it's a through ball good defending In he goes. Oh, it's a header, 2-1. They've turned it round. Not quite sure why. 
there's the ball through over the top. There's a chance. Will he go alone? Yes, he will. 3-1. Sim does well. Now Fred, what can he find? He needs an option ahead of him. Gets it from Jan. Chance for Jan. Ian's bursting in at the back post, but it goes through. A good ball, it was inviting. Shooting chance again. Blocked by Kieran. And that should run through to the goalkeeper. Kurt trying to take some sting out of it after three quick goals. Roddy does well. Can he find a pass? Finds Sim inside. Spread out to Arthur. That's good play. Arthur with uh, an early ball towards Ian. Oh, he just couldn't trap it. On the far side, Ian takes a throw early and Colin is in the box. Not many options. And the cross is dealt with by the goalkeeper. Down there. Spot the ball competition. In towards the box, it's headed. Nick is going to battle for that, and he's going to bring it away. But tackled, and a free kick given, and Ollie make up the two-man defensive wall. Who will take it? It's a cross. Good defending from Kieran. And good defending from Fred, who also cleverly wins the free kick. A shot was fired wide, but it doesn't matter. Arthur intercepts well. It's gone over Kieran. And there's a chance. Oh, there's another chance. It looks like an offside has been given there. Difficult to tell. Don't know where the linesman is or if there even is an assistant referee on the near side. It looks like the referee might have given that. I'm not sure. Some joy down this right for Glasgow. Good play, shooting chance again, perhaps. Does go for goal, blocked. Oh, that's a good effort and a very good save. There's an interesting corner, cleared. Another shooting chance. Oh! That's only just over the bar. Gap. No offside here. Men are filling the middle, but Kieran this time stands up and does well and clears well. Good pass. And there's a chance. Two on two. Great feet. Wide. Oh, chance. Can Yang get the shot away? Oh, it's at the back stick. Colin. Two, three, two. And he's injured himself. It was a brave finish, and Colin. Yang did so well to keep the ball alive. Colin is hurt. But he is the hero with the second goal there. Right then, I am just jumping on a sandwich and I, and I, I let it that out. But um, the second half is about to get underway. It's 3-2, so it's evenly poised for the second half. I'm just enjoying a ham sandwich. Chance. Oh, it's off the post. 4 2. He followed in the rebound and celebrates. A threat again. It's a little through ball. Oh. I think that's what they say good football all round.
Ooh, a little kick there, but Jan keeps going, finds Colin. Good chance. Goes for goal early. Just over. That's better for Oakland Brighton. They'll be happy with that. Glasgow seems to counter themselves. Real chance again. He's got options to pull back. Oh, there was no one behind him. He left it. For reasons only he will know. He might get another go here. He goes for the volley. Just wide. Good football from Glasgow, this. He gets past Sim. Chance. Good save from Kurt. Over the bar. Corner. Well defended, but the chance. Oh, just wide. Sim to Arthur. Lines up across. It's a good cross. Oh, it's a chance. And it's a goal by Matt. Could that be the goal that gets them back in it? It was some finish from a tight, tight angle. It's long. No pressure on that, but tired legs out there now. Fred calling for it in the middle. He's got options forward. He goes long diagonal towards Roddy. It's a good ball. It's... Oh, there's a chance, perhaps at the back stick. A tough one to take down for Matt. Roddy with the cross. And Matt couldn't quite bring it down. In it comes. In comes said missile. High. Oh, just defended. Step, shot, deflected. Chance. Goal. I think that is the decisive one. That's 5-3. It burst through and it was a good finish from, a t from close range. On. Roddy did well, plays a good ball, that's not going to be offside, Matt, oh, he's in here, can he score? Oh, it's just wide. He's going to run through towards goal, is he going to go alone again? He pulls it back, chance. Kurt with a terrific back six stave, not clear, Nick did well. Not too much longer. Jan tries to bring it down. Chance for Fred to hit one. Over the bar. Nice flick on. There are chances all the way through. He's gone for goal. They had two runners there. Greedy. Got by Kurt. This looks like Kieran. Oh, bad clearance from Kurt. Saved. He makes up for it. And that's full time. So, at the end, it's three, three goals for Black, but five goals for Soltai Thistle. Greeted with a warm applause all round. Despite the 5-3 scoreline at the end, Brighton Blags will feel that there are positives to take from the display. They've come away from home and scored three goals and created opportunities to score more. And there are also examples of good defending, good midfield play, good goalkeeping and good attacking play across the field. Saltire Thistle shaded the game and created more opportunities and they did take their, ch their chances well. So in the next fixture, Brighton Blags will be playing against Nottingham Lions 
and that's the next one to look forward to. So we've got back to the hotel room from the football match and now we are going to dare to take on the weather of Glasgow again because it was chucking down with the rain as we got back um, as it has been for most of our days here but we've enjoyed our stay anyway but we're going to go up now to try and find the post-match social and then perhaps some drinks later on in the, the in the gay scene somewhere perhaps and if not then we will come back and relax in the hotel before our flight back tomorrow as well. The post-match social included some pizza and some drinks at a student bar in Glasgow alongside the opposition and then as a team we played a game of team darts on the electronic darts boards which was quite good fun although to be honest I had no idea what was going on. We then went on to a bar called Delmonica's. We moved on to a club called Polo Lounge where Kurt and Colin showed off their dance moves. It was a really fun night out and really great to be out with the teammates for my birthday and with Facundo as well. Inexplicably, I managed to somehow drink two shots of tequila for my birthday. It does leave me wondering whether our team socials really are just mutually assured destruction. So the final part of my birthday after getting back from Glasgow is this lovely birthday cake that Facundo has bought for me. Uh, we are about to cut the cake and eat it. Lovely. And here we go. Is that what we should have? And here I have my present from Facundo for my birthday. He's been to M&S and it's a very lovely bag. But the bag isn't, of course, the present. Um, inside, what have we got here? We've got, it looks like a rugby sort of jersey. It's very nice colours. I'm very happy with that. It's a very lovely design, uh, sort of long sleeve jersey. For Christmas, we went back home to see my parents in Kent. Um, Really, we, we, it's just relaxing is what we normally do. We had some presents that we took over there. We took a hamper of food back over and we received a hamper in return from my parents. Uh, they've also bought us uh, some things for the flat. So including these, there's two of these uh, rainbow sort of plant pots um, as well. And we had lots of different gifts. And Facundo bought me uh, this live album by Aretha Franklin on vinyl, which it sounds amazing really, it's, it's, she's got such an amazing voice. And then at work as well, I, we got given a, a, a secret Santa, which I think I might sneakily use for the wedding, which is Mr and Mr. A very thoughtful gift from my colleague Jenny at work. Um, I'm very happy with that and that will feature in the wedding somewhere if I can find a way to use it. We had a lovely Christmas this year. We got back to Kent on Christmas Eve Eve. And then on Christmas Eve itself, we went down for a walk to Dungeness, which is quite a bleak part of Kent, where it's very windswept. The weather really closes in and it was very windy when we were down there. So we had a short walk. We saw the lighthouse. We saw the former nuclear power station, which looks a bit like Chernobyl. And then we had a hot chocolate afterwards. Back at home on Christmas, a typical Christmas day for us. We got up and went for a little walk after breakfast uh, and then we came back to look at the presents under the tree and then later in the afternoon we had a lovely Christmas dinner. Uh, they had all the trimmings. We had turkey, we had all the meat, the vegetables and there was of course gravy as well. A little bit frustrating to have been injured and it still is. It's always a little bit anxious uh, when you get injured, especially as you get a little bit older in a football career takes you a little bit longer to recover. Um, basically what happened is I, I rolled my ankle in a football training. It's been very, very painful. 
lots of swelling. Uh, it's still painful now and it's the same ankle that I damaged quite badly when I was in my mid twenties. Uh, it took me eight months back then to make it feel perhaps not right, but able to play football again on it. And I can feel where it's, it's not right now. It, it, it's very sore, even just walking. So I've got an ankle support on all the time. And when you get injured, it's always a little bit, does it, it is anxious because um, I don't know how long it will be before I'm able to get back active again in not just football, but with other sports. And then you do worry about what you miss out on um, when you play with the team. You know, will I be able to get back into the team? Um, it's always a little bit, it just, it plays on your mind a little bit really about recovery and being part of the team but the, the the bunch of guys that I play with are a great bunch and um you know I, I don't think there'll be any issues at all so I'm, I am looking forward to getting back into it in the new year however I don't know how long it will be until I'm able to so it's a waiting game and I suppose my next vlog after this one will probably be charting how difficult it is to recover really so that's to come Another year is is over though, and we are both thinking about that and reflecting on the year ahead, planning for our wedding. And it's been on my mind quite a bit, just the sense of getting older, not just because of the, the injury, but uh, you know, I, I think at the age of 34, do I move into my mid thirties? I'm not sure, I, I'd like to try and cling to early thirties, but um, no, it's probably now mid thirties. And it, it brings its own sense of perhaps a little bit of extra wisdom um, but there's also, uh, looking back as well, that, that feeling of when you're younger, recognising how far you've come as a person, really. And I look back at myself, I was quite shy uh, in some ways. Um, and there's, I think the things in life you regret are always the things you don't do. And there's many times, many things that I could have done that I was a bit too scared to do when I was uh, a teenager or a young person. And... Facundo and I have been watching some TV series um, and it's about being sort of a teenager going off to university, that kind of thing. So it's, it's helped us reminisce a little bit and reflect um, perhaps a sense of losing your youth and what, what or, or being able to understand your youth a little bit as well. Um, but, you, you know, you change as you get older. Um, so for me, the thing I feel is, is that the excitement of expectation isn't quite there in the same way anymore as it used to be but at the same time I, I was so nervous with some things I never did them anyway whereas now I am more sort of sure of things uh, more certain of things and also I think both of us what's really lovely is that we want to get the most of every experience so that's what we're looking forward to with our wedding this year and whenever we've been traveling as well we've really enjoyed traveling and anything new really I, I'm I am keen to try new things and do new things and seize the moment because you know you have to and that's how you move forward I think that when you're in your mid-30s you are more sure of yourself you do understand quite a bit from your mistakes as well, really um, quite a lot of my regrets are perhaps not treating some people as well as I should have done perhaps letting people down but at the same time, also knowing that there's been lots of times when I have been there for people and I have been there to support friends and loved ones as well and appreciating that that is important in life. You know, to me, it is important to help people and to try and be there for people. There's been times when I haven't been and I regret that. I carry with, I carry that sense of regret with me. But that's part of life that you realise perhaps you can't always make amends for everything in life and you have to move forward with your life positively and try and keep going and make a difference really so you know you can't get some of the lost time back um you have to move forward positively and in this new year i hope to continue trying to do that trying to be there uh trying to enjoy people's company and keep my heart open to uh old friends as it were um and also keep my heart open to making new friends as well so that's the new year, hopefully, that I'm looking forward to.